This is NTV. see you on uh, this Thursday morning, actually the last Thursday of the month of April. So again, I hope you've made better use of the month because uh, time really, really flies, okay? But I'm uh, excited to have you this morning. And of course, we have a very important conversation and this is as far as sustainability, um, you know, when it comes to business is concerned. Of course, today we'll be focusing on Safaricom and I'm pretty sure all of us know Safaricom, like it's not new. <laughs> They've been here, they're doing amazing things, but of course, we want to understand more and especially when it comes to, you know, sustainability from, uh, um, you know, the business side of the same. So you want to stick around until the end of the conversation to understand more. And of course, we'll be focusing on three main areas today and this is as far as um, you know, health is concerned, education, as well as economic empowerment as well. But if you have a question, uh, of course, you want to direct them our way as far as sustainability is concerned and what that looks like, um, you know, from a business sense. And of course, just want to understand more about Safaricom and their projects and all those things at NTV Kenya, both on Facebook and on Twitter is how you can reach us. But give us a call as well if you want to talk to us directly. Our lines are open. But for now, my guest for the day, Mr. Stephen Kiptinus, uh, and of course, he is the Chief Corporate Affairs Officer, Safaricom PLC. So good to have you this morning. Karibu sana. First time on the show, right? Right here First on your world. First time on the show. Thank Karibu you for sana. the opportunity. Karibu sana. I hope you feel uh, welcome. <laughs> so far, so, so good. So far, so good. <laughs> I like that. All right. Um, and you know, now we hear a lot of conversations around sustainability, right? Um, and you hear this from, you know, all angles either environment from a business um you know when it comes to corporate and all those things but uh for you right as safaricom what exactly does sustainability mean if we can start from there okay yeah. so for us as safaricom mm -hmm. um one of the things that uh, of course safaricom is a big brand in this country it really is um, yeah. and the brand visibility is not just in the context of our products mm -hmm. our services yeah uh, but also in terms of how we approach and how we do business. Mm -hmm. And to that extent, therefore, mm -hmm. sustainability is a very key pillar mm -hmm. in terms of how we as Safaricom mm -hmm. go about doing business. Okay. It is important to run a sustainable business. Mm -hmm. um, this is part of Safaricom's move towards implementing sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the key sustainable development goals, um, I believe it would be... Um, Sustainable Goal, uh, Development Goal 12, mm. is about um, ensuring you have production and consumption by of our products, of our services, mm -hmm. that is sustainable. Yeah. So you're helping to conserve your environment, and SDG 15 is about environmental conservation as well. Mm -hmm. But ensuring that we can give back into our environment, mm -hmm. into our communities, mm -hmm. ensure that our business is not damaging the environment, yeah. ensuring that our business is contributing and giving mm -hmm. more than it's taking out of mm -hmm. the environment. Yeah. It's also about the principle of what's known as um, running a circular economy mm. so that okay. you ensure that your approach to production, your mm -hmm. approach to manufacturing, mm -hmm. your approach to consumption, and this is not just for Safaricom but for our partners mm -hmm. and our suppliers as well, mm -hmm. is a context which takes into account mm -hmm. reuse, recycling, mm -hmm do not discard if it has not reached its ultimate end in utility yeah. and even when you talk about e-waste mm -hmm. which might have come to the end of its useful life mm -hmm. how you dispose of it the That's manner in which you dispose of it yeah. is very critical mm -hmm. towards ensuring mm -hmm. that you're doing it in a way that is not damaging to the to environment, the environment. Yeah. so running a business that will be sustainable mm -hmm. in terms um, in the technical terms but also in in, in human terms mm -hmm. um, is very critical for us as safaricom it's mm -hmm. something that 
uh, we take very seriously and mm -hmm. uh, we practice. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't just preach it, we mm -hmm. practice it on a day-to-day -day basis. And I am proud to be associated with Safaricom, a business that takes mm -hmm. sustainability very, very seriously. seriously. So yeah. for me as an individual, um, that's a key flag um, in which you can identify whether Safaricom is a business that is sustainable. And there's details that um, you know, I'll go into in the course of the show around Absolutely. how sustainability yeah. shows up for Safaricom. Mm -hmm. I hear that. Um, and of course, like you said, uh, the SDG, and of course, we want to go beyond 2030. I mean, at the end of the day, you, we want to see Safaricom, you know, 2050, 2070, you know, and beyond. So really um, giving back to, you know, the environment and the whole ecosystem is, is, is a pretty much important. So again, like you said, Safaricom, um, you know, one of the largest corporates, um, you know, in, in the country. Uh, and of course, there's also Safaricom Foundation. We also have M-Pesa Foundation. There's a lot of things, uh, you know, that um, you deal with as, as Safaricom. So when it comes to then the various areas that Safaricom is very, very key on, especially when it comes to sustainability. I mean, you mentioned a lot of things, this, the, you know, the environment, um, you know, all these other areas, right? So... What are some of these objectives that probably Safaricom has put in place just to make sure that at the end of the day, in as much as yes, this is, you know, a business that we're running, but we also take care of, you know, all the things. So what are some of these driving forces for Safaricom? The government of Kenya, um, through its flagship uh, Vision 2030, mm -hmm. is hoping mm -hmm. um, and intending that Kenya will be a, an industrialized nation, mm -hmm. middle-income nation yeah. by 2030. Okay. Now, we are about seven years or less than seven years yes. away now. Yeah. And I do like to tell my students that mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to wake up on the 1st of January 2030 and we are industrialized. It's a series of steps that you take that towards to that. Happen, yeah. uh, so the government has um, a goal in that regard. Mm -hmm. I think the private sector has a very critical um, partnership role to play with the government mm -hmm. in doing that. Mm -hmm. um, enter Safaricom. Yeah. So for us, um, the, 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 the move towards um, industrialization, ensuring that you know, Kenya can become that industrialized nation, mm -hmm. is very critical for us in terms of how we execute, um, how, how we reach our business. One of the, mm -hmm. the things that the current government and the, uh, His Excellency the President has uh, been very focused about mm -hmm. is environmental con conservation. conservation yeah. right? That's, That's a key. really big thing. Mm -hmm. One of the things we've done, um, by way of example, is um, to ensure that we are contributing towards that agenda on environmental conversation in mm -hmm. a big way. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we have done uh, with the Kenya Forestry Service is mm -hmm. to sign an agreement on climate action. Mm. Yeah. This will allow us to um, rehabilitate, reforest, mm -hmm. conserve, protect, manage the environment mm -hmm. um, to the tune of about 5,000 hectares. Mm -hmm. Um, the Kenya For Forestry Service obviously is the state agency that's charged with protecting our forests, mm -hmm. our ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, and so as Safaricom, we have taken deliberate steps to engaging with them. Mm -hmm. um, of course, as Safaricom, you know, our business is providing communication services. Mm -hmm. uh, we are moving towards becoming a technology company. Mm -hmm. um, our base stations are, are dotting across the length and breadth of this country. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways we engage with the uh, Kenya Forestry Service is mm -hmm. to ensure that as much as we have base stations in many areas across the country, yeah. um, ensure that our base stations um, can be run sustainably. Mm -hmm. One way of running a base station sustainably mm -hmm. is by reducing reliance on diesel power, which is not clean energy. Mm. Um, moving to solar power, which mm -hmm. is much cleaner energy. All right. um, so the government has uh, made uh, uh, you know, a shout out, if you like, mm -hmm. to ensure that every Kenyan, in fact, when you have any government event, mm -hmm. um, let's plant trees. Let's make sure that we are reforesting our country, which has been decimated significantly. So a very big push by Safaricom is to ensure that we can see through this climate action and ensure that we are contributing um, we, do emit, yeah. uh, we do emit carbon mm -hmm. um, as part of uh, our business. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we must do as Safaricom is to try and find ways mm -hmm. to reduce those emissions. And that's why I gave the first example of reducing our reliance mm -hmm. on diesel, diesel. Um, on, yeah. diesel, on the yeah. use Moving of diesel and diesel energy. generators, exactly. Mm -hmm. But we must plant more trees. Mm -hmm. um, since 2019, we've, plant, uh, we've plant, planted about um, or just over one million trees mm -hmm. um, in, in collaboration with the Kenya Forestry Service. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, we are trying to set off 
um, mm -hmm. our carbon emissions okay. so that you know for whatever we are emitting mm -hmm. we're reducing we're countering that mm -hmm. uh, by planting more trees and I don't think we can plant too many trees um, yeah. so for us one of the big things in the context of the environment is to ensure that we are polluting less mm -hmm. we are helping to plant we are forest we manage our ecosystems mm -hmm. um, and just you know to conclude that point mm -hmm. Uh, the important thing is not the planting of trees, yeah. it is the growing, growing of the trees. Of trees yeah. So if mm -hmm. you plant the trees and you don't take steps to ensure that they are grown mm -hmm. um, so that they eventually um, you know, become a forest, mm -hmm. then we're spinning our wheels in the mud. Mm -hmm. So growing the trees is a whole um, additional effort and therefore in terms of how we plant and grow trees, mm -hmm. we do that within a context of you know, schools or institutions mm -hmm who are the local communities around those areas. Mm -hmm. We lean on them, we rely on them, and we um, undertake audits throughout the year. So if we've planted certain trees in a particular community, mm -hmm. we hold them accountable, we support them, but we also go and audit and ensure that mm -hmm. the trees we planted are being taken care of, yeah. they are growing. Mm -hmm. We do not want to come back and find, okay, trees yeah. that we planted have been neglected, mm -hmm. uh, they've been They've been fodder for cattle, yep. um, and when that happens, then we sort of relocate the planting. So for us, it's very key mm -hmm. that we're putting our money where our mouth is Absolutely. and ensuring that yeah. we are partnering. Mm -hmm. And if we're partnering with communities, of course, if we plant trees that are beneficial to them, so if they're trees that would deliver certain fruits, uh, mm. would deliver benefit to the, to the, yeah. to the community, yeah. so it becomes a symbiotic relationship. So yeah. being able to look into the science of how that happens in a sustainable way mm -hmm. is how safaricom goes about business I see we, that. We, we don't pay lip service mm -hmm. um you know to the planting of trees or, yeah. or protecting our environment mm -hmm. okay i see that um and of course the whole question about because majority of the times people would say yeah safaricom you know it's a telco you know communications and all those things so you know what business do you have when it comes to conserving the environment but again that is the whole essence about sustainability right making sure that you know we look look at the future and all those things um we talked about safaricom's goal and that is to cut down on uh, emissions right um but what percentage just curious uh, by what percentage do you have a target um for the same so that by this time we, yeah. so by mm -hmm. 2050, 2050 we are okay. undertaking to be net zero okay. so that our emissions mm -hmm. are countered by what we are um, putting back into the environment okay. um we are We've put that out there. We expect to be held to account. We will. Uh, but like a diligent <laughs> student, um, you know, we're not going to sit and wait for 2050 20 to come. 2050, yeah. Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, countries um, are already having conversations of how to become mm -hmm. net positive. Mm -hmm. So um, if we can get to the place where worst case scenario, we are net zero by 2050. Mm -hmm. But if we are able to be net positive by then, mm -hmm. then the better. Okay. Um, and I think it behoves um, the whole the whole globe and certainly for us as mm -hmm. Kenya and specifically as Safaricom mm -hmm. uh, to ensure as part of um, you know SDG um, 15 mm -hmm. we are actually taking deliberate steps to do that so we want to be held accountable okay. we audit ourselves every year mm -hmm. how far are we along that journey mm -hmm. to ensuring that we become net zero to ensure yeah. that we are making deliberate steps towards mm -hmm. that target mm -hmm. okay how far are you now so we've planted. So one of the things we're doing is, like I said, through the trees, the yeah. tree planting. Mm -hmm. We've committed to plant uh, five million trees okay. <coughs> by 2025. Okay. Um, so there's there's a series of activities. One of them, like I said, is transitioning, transiting mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. um, diesel gensets diesel to, um, cleaner you know, to, yeah. to, to cleaner energy. Mm -hmm. uh, but also the planting of the trees, which uh, we expect that by 2025 we will have planted five million trees. So we probably have just over. Three point um, maybe seven eight million trees to go uh, okay. within the next two and a half three years tops. Mm -hmm. You know, by yeah. the time we get to twenty twenty five. So again, that's something we're we we've put we've put out there as a commitment by Safaricom mm -hmm. uh, that we expect to be held accountable to, mm -hmm. and we're taking quite a number of steps to do this in partnerships. Um, and interestingly, mm -hmm. um, it should be SDG seventeen, which um, speaks to partnering to achieve goals. Mm -hmm. We do not believe as Safaricom that mm -hmm. this is a journey that can be Operating walked alone. Silos, uh, you've yeah. heard it said that you mm -hmm. know if you want to go fast, you walk alone. But if you want to go far, then you walk with others. Yeah. 
we have taken upon ourselves as Safaricom mm -hmm. um, to be evangelists mm -hmm. um, you know, for these SDGs. Mm -hmm. And partnerships is one of the ways you can do it. Partnering right. with the government for us is absolutely critical. Okay. The government has to take ownership. The government is a very key supporter. Mm -hmm. uh, but beyond and above um, the government, mm -hmm. partnering with other private sector entities and other mm -hmm. state-owned agencies mm -hmm. to make sure that this gospel is being spread um, far and wide mm -hmm. to ensure mm -hmm. that all of us if we can conserve our environment, mm -hmm. take steps to ensure that we are becoming net zero, we're moving towards net zero, mm -hmm. then we will have helped our country. Our country will be in a much yeah. better place. So partnerships yeah. for us mm -hmm. are absolutely critical. Recently, um, when we came from a tree planting, went for a tree planting session at, at Kinale mm -hmm. uh, Forest in Kijabe, mm -hmm. um, we, were, we were happy that um, ABSA um, said that they wanted to partner with us and mm -hmm. we We've had discussions and you know, we do have a formal engagement with APSA so that um, we can walk this journey with them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just one example of the partners that we have recently partnered with. All right. I gave you the example of Kenya Forestry Service as well. So for us, partnerships mm -hmm. are the way to go. Mm -hmm. And of course, I mean, we, we always talk about the uh, public-private partnership. So I'm happy you talked about you know, partnering with the government and other state agencies, but also um, other private sectors. I mean, we'll come back and talk about more about um, you know, partnerships and how important this is. Um, but at the same time, again, it's not just the climate mitigation strategy that you know, Safaricom has put in place, just make sure that you also contribute towards something. But um, other areas that we talked about, that is health, education, as well as um, economic empowerment, right? Um, and I think this is big because we see these uh, on a daily, but again, you'll tell us more about um, the same. But very quickly, before we go on a break, because I understand we have like two more minutes before we go on, um, on a break. Um, so, so far, in, as far as Safaricom um, is concerned, and, and one of the things that we talked about is the environment, right? So what are some of the gaps that you know, Safaricom as a business noticed and said, listen, this and this and this and this is not working right. The environment is, is, is important to us and this is what we need to do to make sure that uh, you know, we conserve the environment but also operate sustainably as a business. So what are some of these gaps that you, know, you identified as Safaricom very quickly before we go on a break and then we'll come back and talk about health, education and economic empowerment. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so some of the gaps that we've identified, and um, that's a very loaded question because there's quite a bit that can be said around that. Okay. I think one of the critical things mm -hmm. is, is the people element, mm -hmm. right? Um, as Safaricom, mm -hmm. um, our vision is to be a purpose-led technology company. Okay. Um, and we, we, we intend to achieve that through our mission, um, through transforming lives. Um, if we can transform the lives of Kenyans, okay. And in that context, mm -hmm. every single Kenyan mm -hmm. is our customer, mm -hmm. not just those who have our, who patronize our services or have our SIM card. Okay. So potentially all Kenyans are, um, are our customers because we invest, mm -hmm. our corporate social investment spreads across 47 counties. Okay. So just the not people element, said only for customers. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Absolutely not. I uh, see uh, that, yeah. Uh, I mean, and that's, that's why Safaricom is about running sustainable business and mm -hmm. ensuring we have a huge social impact. Our mm -hmm. corporate social investment is a very big part of how we operate. In fact, without a corporate social investment arm, mm -hmm. um, then what we are doing is just running after money, profit okay. making. And for okay. us, we say mm -hmm. it's profit first. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's purpose, it's first, purpose and first, and then, then our people, mm -hmm. and then the profits will come. Mm -hmm. So we've identified a huge gap really is mm -hmm. the human element, both internally mm -hmm. um, and our, the people, the communities um, that, that are out there. So mm -hmm. in terms of enabling, strengthening um, our people. Mm -hmm. We work in the context of the environmental conservation mm -hmm. through third parties. Mm -hmm. We also work through our teams on the ground All in right. trying to identify opportunities to conserve the environment, mm -hmm. and including health, education, and we'll talk about that, and, yeah. and economic empowerment. Mm -hmm. um, our local teams on ground will go and engage the local communities, identify what are the needs, the challenges, where yeah, are the yeah. gaps, what are the challenges they're having. Mm -hmm. And that will be fed back up um, to the foundations, to the business, mm -hmm. so that we are helping to meet mm -hmm. those needs, mm -hmm. have that impact in a way that the community mm -hmm. can feel, yes, we have been helped. Mm -hmm. This is very different from taking a boardroom strategy, yeah. going on ground, mm -hmm. flooding the place with some sort of social investment which doesn't speak to the people. Mm -hmm. So it means that our people on ground, mm -hmm. our, our, um, you know, our people who work in the agencies, our people who work in our shops, mm -hmm. they're not just doing the profit making side, mm -hmm. but they're also focusing on partnering with the communities. And mm -hmm. that's why for us, every single county mm -hmm. is 
part of our corporate social impact, impact and investment. Yeah. So uh -huh. I think the people element is a really it's big a really, part. Really key. Yeah. Uh, without the people element, then you know you can't achieve um, what true. what Safaricom has achieved. So for uh, us, that's really important. Okay, I see that. All right. So purpose, people, and uh, profits. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's take a break, and of course, when we come back, we want to understand. So then, what sort of investments um, you know Safaricom has done when it comes to health, when it comes to education, which is again is very key, and um, you know economic empowerment. And one of the other questions um, you know that of course we might ask is then how can we as a people, because like you said, people is important to Safaricom. So how can people, you know, Kenyans, ordinary Kenyans also, um, you know, join in the band well as far as partnership is concerned, just to make sure that, um, you know, we are all sustainable and of course live, um, you know, in a better environment. And of course, all that is coming up after the break. But again, like you said, if you have any question, um, you know, as far as, you know, Safaricom and, uh, you know, the, the business really in general. But again, we're talking about sustainability in this case today. So at MTV Kenya, both on Facebook, and on Twitter is how you can reach us or better yet give us a call the numbers are down on your screens and of course our lines are open so we do all that after the break stay with us this is your world Maisha yako mapendeleo yako Tunukiwa na Safaricom Chagua bei yako ya kupigia simu au data Pigia star triple four hash Au utembele my Safaricom app Upate dilipoa ya kupigia simu Uonge zaidi au ubrowse zaidi Mtoi amepewa 3 days alipe school fees Gadha ni marangapi ni mekwambe tupeleku mtu ishi le gava na utaki kunisikiza. Ule nsisa hapo mpele kesho le private na hata hauna pesa. Eh? Shika! Start your life here. It's not enough for me. It's just not enough. You don't know what they do to girls like you. I think it's a mean name. Cindy. That's a name. Sorry, who is your father? That's a couple bells! I had another family. Another wife. The Directorate of Occupational Safety and Health Services invites you to a high-level panel discussion on occupational safety and health live on NTV from Tomboya Labor College Grounds, Kisumu on 27th of April 2023 from 5.30pm to 7pm as we commemorate the World Day for Safety and Health. The theme for this year is a safe and healthy working environment as a fundamental principle and right at work. The Directorate of Occupational Safety and Health Services, a healthy worker in a safe work environment. Your dream home for as low as 1.98 million Kenya shillings in Vipingo Kilifi. SMS Vipingo to double two three six five or call us today on zero seven four zero four double zero two one five. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. The show is um, Your World. And of course, today we're talking about all matters uh, sustainability. Of course, like we said, we're having a special focus on Safaricom, um, you know, both as a business and of course as a corporate, as an entity, and what it's doing to, you know, make sure that, again, we have, uh, we maintain sustainability as far as, you know, the environment and all these other areas are concerned. And of course, focusing on the business sense of the same. But again, uh, like my guest said today, you know, it's, it's all about purpose 
purpose people and profit. then <laughs> and then profit, profit uh, later on and just in case you're tuning in today um, you know right now like I said um, you know we're having a conversation as far as you know sustainability in business but also how you contribute and of course my guest is Stephen Kiptines who's the Chief Corporate Affairs uh, Officer Safaricom PLC and of course before we went on a break we really really extensively talked about um, you know the climate change mitigation measures by Safaricom and what it's doing and like he said the target is to have five million trees grown not right. just planted by 20, 2025 okay uh, and he said we need to hold them accountable so we absolutely will um, and also the whole question about reducing you know diesel energy and focusing on cleaner energy which is good but let's also talk about um, you know these other important areas that Safaricom is also really really focusing on and like we said health education and also economic empowerment so uh, can we start with um, health because I know there's a lot of um, investments that have been made over three billion plus shillings are uh, invested into health so can we really um, get to understand how Safaricom has been involved in transforming and improving health um, care services you know in general here in the country right mm -hmm. so it's not accidental that health is one of the very major pillars in mm -hmm. which Safaricom chooses to have a social impact okay health in any country is absolutely critical. Sure. If you do not have a reliable health service, mm -hmm. if you don't have affordable health, um, then you'll find that your population will not give you what you really want in terms of um, economic strength. Mm -hmm. So we do live in a country that um, is plagued by fairly average to low health services, particularly if you move mm -hmm. out of the metropolises into the rural areas. Yeah. And even in the metropolises, you do have areas which are underserved. Mm -hmm. So you have a huge chunk of our population mm -hmm. who don't have access. In fact, most of our population mm -hmm. don't have access, access um, to. to ideal, to excellent mm -hmm. health services. Yeah. Um, and this is where Safaricom has determined that through our foundations, mm -hmm. that's a very critical area of providing some, <sighs> some sustainability, okay. providing some, some level of... Um, equanimity around mm -hmm. how health is accessed okay. um, and we've we've purpose to do this in all the 47 counties mm -hmm. when we for when we choose to focus on maternal health mm -hmm. you know we're talking about a, a very critical component mm -hmm. of our population who give life in this country so for us it's maternal mm -hmm. reproductive health mm -hmm. um, it is also child health mm -hmm. and adolescent health and, and particularly around reproductive health mm -hmm. a lot of our mothers in this country um, would be delivering in places, in villages, in areas where mm. they have a high either mortality rate of the mothers mm -hmm. or the children. Uh, the children. And so for yeah. Safaricom, mm -hmm. we, we realize that as a very quick place to invest mm -hmm. and pro provide some level of dignity for mothers when they are delivering mm -hmm. um, and a chance that not only they will survive, but mm -hmm. the children will survive. Yeah. So Safaricom has partnered with different county governments uh, with, you know, to, cre to, to, to facilitate equipment in different um, health facilities. Mm -hmm that will provide um, some access to some quality health. Um, we've just finished a program in Kilifi mm. where we were providing not just training but support around fistula. Mm. And you know, in Kilifi just this week, there's some women who came for support around that um, fistula health who mm. have carried it for 25 years, oh, wow. uh, which is something that sh really shouldn't happen in today's day and age. Mm -hmm. So for us, that is really critical. We've just finished some menstrual hygiene support mm -hmm. um, again in certain counties around the country, mm -hmm. um, just to support understanding and growth of that sort of um, quality support. So mm -hmm. we have done quite a bit around providing facilities mm -hmm. with equipment that will allow for children who are born prematurely to have a better chance at life. So, mm -hmm. you know, incubators. Um, and the drastic change mm -hmm. that we see, mm -hmm. in other words, the increase in the sustainability in the life of mm -hmm. those children or those mothers mm -hmm. is so drastic. And we picked, we started with sort of, you know, the counties that have the highest mortality, mortality rates rate, yeah. with, uh, for maternal and mm -hmm. child health. Mm -hmm. um, and as soon as uh, some of that equipment was introduced in some of those hospitals, you know, like in Peketoni in Lamo County, mm -hmm. we've seen a huge increase in the lives that have been saved, both of mothers and children. children yeah. uh, a very interesting um, story. Um, when I was in Kilifi a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. um, just going to sort of monitor um, and, and, and speak to the county government around you know, how this program has been implemented. Mm -hmm. um, typically, you'd see a lot of um, mothers in, 
in, in some of those facilities with their children going through you know health treatment um, and in this in, in this one particular ward there was about 10 mothers and there was this one father who was there with his with his with his daughter mm. um, and his wife wasn't there she had gone to take a break um, mm. and, and they were doing the the kangaroo thing where mm. they put the child you know on their chest yeah. and there was this father who was in a maternity gown with his child um, mm. I was terribly impressed That's because um, see, we don't yeah. see that a lot no. um, with our with our men folk mm -hmm. um, we were absolutely thrilled to see that but this has given an opportunity I think to um, individuals citizens of our country who wouldn't otherwise have that access so our focus is on is, is on maternal health reproductive health mm -hmm. child and adolescent health to make sure that we're giving our people especially the very vulnerable in our population mm -hmm. a better opportunity at yeah. having better health at, at living a more quality life mm -hmm. It essentially gives dignity absolutely. and I think that's really really important for us absolutely and I mean health is one of the basic you know um, human rights um, and, and not just in the country but really the, the entire globe but it's, it's unfortunate that um, there's a bit of inequality there where there's some areas or regions where um, access to healthcare is pretty much easy but then there are others that might be a little bit tricky and also affordability of the same might be a absolutely. little bit costly um, for, the, for not even a little bit can be quite costly, um, very, costly. Know, for, for, very costly for so many people. So and it's, it's SDG as well. Absolutely. It's, it's part of the SDG, SDG yeah. 3 in mm -hmm. terms of providing good health. Yeah. So again, yeah. taking what is an SDG goal and taking that into an implementable mm -hmm. um, ability within our country. Mm -hmm. um, the impact it has made, I mean, look, those stories are very many mm -hmm. and they bring tears to one's yeah. eyes if uh, yeah. you are to go on ground and speak to the difference it has made to the mm -hmm. lives of those people yeah some things you might take for granted and others you know might really wish that they get that and not just access to affordable but also quality health care also you want to talk about a little bit about screening um you know especially when it comes to like non-communicable diseases NCDs. yes mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. yes so um we've also so again in in terms of how we choose where we're focusing on mm -hmm. so of course ncds is a very non-communicable disease is, mm -hmm. is also a very big area. Mm -hmm. um, this comes from having partnered not just with the communities mm -hmm. but with the medical experts on ground to mm -hmm. find out what are those areas of health needs that mm -hmm. would allow us to make an immediate impact and non-communicable disease, diseases is one of those areas where yeah. um, we've also been able to have a very quick and immediate impact. I mean um, the kind of NCDs, the growth of NCDs across our country um, is, is very scary. Mm -hmm. And so for us, being able to allow people an opportunity uh, to go through screening, to identify some of those um, diseases at an early point, um, they can be caught, they can uh, go through the treatment phase um, and uh, inshallah recover, mm -hmm. I think is very important for us. Yeah. And, and across the country then, you know, we have different, um, different initiatives that we follow. I mean, we have a partnership um, that we do with um, Gertrude's Children's Hospital, which mm -hmm. obviously is the preeminent children's institution in our country, mm -hmm. uh, where we provide an opportunity um, in three countries. It should be Lamo, Samburu, and Homa Bay, right. where we have trained nurses on ground at the different county facilities, the health facilities, where then we have provided connectivity. Mm -hmm. And this connectivity allows a pedi pediatric doctor in Gertrude's mm -hmm to assess a child, to basically go through patient checks, tests, and recommend treatment mm -hmm. without this child having to come all the way to Gertrude's. And even mm -hmm. if they had an opportunity to come to Gertrude's, they wouldn't be able to afford that healthcare. Yeah. So we are providing um, that child healthcare in those, um, in those counties mm -hmm. so that children in those counties mm -hmm. actually have the same access to the same specialists mm -hmm. my children in Nairobi would have. Yeah. Um, again, that's um, a partnership for us that's working very well. Gertrude provides the technical, the medical um, expertise. Mm -hmm. We provide the connectivity. Mm -hmm. The nurses on ground are trained and they're able to then um, um, talk to the child and direct the child as, 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 as required by the doctor. We also have a program called um, Uzazi Salama, uh, which, you know, just ag again in some of the rural counties, mm -hmm. uh, which speaks to how um, the health of parents, the health of um, children through their parents can happen in a way that will give them a better chance at life. So yeah. we have different programs mm -hmm. um, in different parts of the country that yeah. are going on, but certainly NCD is yeah. a very critical aspect really of, of, of yeah. how we are able to speak to the, mm -hmm. to the health needs in our country. Absolutely. All right. Um, and not only health, but also education, which is also 
huge, you know, when it comes to Safaricom and, you know, the investments that have been made as well. Um, so, yeah, why <laughs> education as well and how, I mean, not just why education alone, but health and also economic empowerment. Um, but before we talk about the why and all those things, can we just understand how then Safaricom is really, really invested in making sure that there's quality education um, for every child um, right. in the country? So just like health, which is critical to creating a population that can work, mm -hmm. The next big thing is education. Is education. Yeah. Um, again, we are cognizant of the fact that a lot of children in this country either don't have access to education or are disadvantaged in how they access education so yeah. that children in the towns and the cities would have a better chance and mm -hmm. therefore it disenfranchises them. Okay. So for us to sort of create some parity, to lend dignity um, um, to learning in education, the education mm -hmm. context. Um, it is critical that for us to be competitive as a nation, for us mm -hmm. to get to becoming an industrialized nation by, um, by, by 2030 and support the government in that, mm -hmm. we need to have solid education. So for us, the focus is to try and provide some level of equality, some level of access, mm -hmm. because again, um, educational facilities and sometimes the equipment that are in those facilities mm -hmm. um, are unaffordable. So education is a big thing. Yeah. Uh, we believe that in educa educating our children, we mm -hmm. give them a chance to get ahead in life. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, our premier project is the Mpesa Foundation mm -hmm. um, Academy um, yeah. that, that, that is out in Juja, mm -hmm. uh, and just near Thika, uh, which provides sponsorships for secondary, secondary going children. All right. But these are children who are from the poorest of the poor, mm -hmm. if you like, um, in our communities across the country. Mm -hmm. So this, gi this gives them an opportunity to access a quality education that they otherwise would not have the opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. um, and the vetting that goes through before any of those children are taken up for that scholarship opportunity mm -hmm. is, is extremely intense. It's, it's, it's perhaps the only academy um, mm -hmm. which, goes, which, 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 which requires the children who are, who are taken on board to go through a vetting. And this vetting will involve some of the people who are in that process going to some of those hamlets, those villages, mm -hmm. to confirm a certain, speak to the chief, speak to the local people, to yeah. confirm that indeed this child mm -hmm. Is deserving is of absolutely deserving this, of this opportunity. This opportunity. Okay. We're not trying to, you know, to, to give this opportunity to anybody who's less than deserving. So mm -hmm. the Impressa Foundation, obviously, Academy, mm -hmm. um, is very critical for us and is our flagship project in terms of how we provide mm -hmm. um, sponsorships. But beyond and uh, beyond that, we are also providing support to different educational facilities mm -hmm. across the country. Yeah. We do that both for in primary schools, in secondary schools, and also TVETs. TVETs um, is really big in our country. I mean, there's a huge number of, of, of individuals who either can't go or do not want to go to university. Mm -hmm. um, and when we were launching our Safaricom Foundation, um, one of the speakers who came in there who had been working in TVET for about 30 years, mm -hmm. and put things in perspective when he told us that um, a lot of the things that you see in the room at the time, uh, the people who had come in there, mm -hmm. were people who went to Tivit. So um, you today, you know, your hair, your hair was made by somebody who went to a Tivit college. Yeah. Um, the suits, the outfits that you're wearing, mm -hmm. these were not made by people who went to do a BCom degree. So mm -hmm. Tivit education is absolutely crucial, yeah. almost the backbone of the country. So we do support um, various Tivit programs to ensure that children who otherwise might not have had the opportunity mm -hmm. um, to further the education, uh, by going to university, and not all of us can, mm -hmm. can and should go to university. In fact, I think TIVETs are, um, are perhaps the way to go. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that um, and through our TIVET partnerships, we're able to provide support for children, um, for individuals mm -hmm. who, have, who can get another chance at life. Mm -hmm. We will support um, different schools, um, focusing also on schools which have disability. I mean, we've had different programs across the country with schools that have disability. I mean, one of the ones, one of the first ones I went to when I joined Safaricom uh, was Joytown School for the Disabled in Thika. Mm -hmm. um, and the joy, the happiness mm -hmm. in the eyes of those children when mm -hmm. you meet their needs, it could be that they were taken for a surgery at, mm -hmm. at, at Kijabe, um, a surgery to correct, you know, a spina a bifida mm -hmm. um, um, defect or um, providing accessibility ramps across the school, something basic for children who are living mm -hmm. with disability. Mm -hmm. It could be partnering with a school um, for children that are visually impaired, mm -hmm. providing digital equipment mm -hmm. that will allow them to interact with technology in a way that they can feel and understand because they're visually impaired. Mm -hmm. As a technology company, mm -hmm. our strength is technology and technological services. Yeah. So. What we want to do is take our strengths in technology and ensure we are leveraging on that to provide 
opportunities and possibilities for these children. Yeah. So do that, but also just do the basics, provide accessibility, provide mm -hmm. opportunities for children um, in different schools. So there's a lot that we do around education, yeah. which I think contributes a huge level of access, opportunity mm -hmm. um, to children who otherwise wouldn't have that Mm -hmm. um, that access and that opportunity in, mm -hmm. in education. I see that. I mean, we would need like five hours to talk about <laughs> just those two, health and education. Yeah. But I can see your time is far much spent. So very quickly, uh, talking about um, economic empowerment, right? Um, and of course, like you said, improving the... Because people... It's, this is what you know is at the center of Safaricom, right? So understanding and improving the livelihoods um, of the people. So to what level would you say how far the impact, um, you know, in terms of like quantifying um, the same when it comes to improving the livelihoods of the people and just empowering them really um, economically? Mm. Mm -hmm. um, so social empowerment, of course, uh, economic empowerment is, is a really big deal. It's almost the next level up, you know, once you've done things in health and I'm not yeah. suggesting that you know we have impacted there's no more needs in health we've impacted <laughs> completely um, yeah. nor am I saying in education you know the impact has been addressed completely mm -hmm. but the next level up is economic empowerment and specifically um, for, for, for young people mm -hmm. um, people living with disability um, disadvantaged people giving yeah. them an opportunity mm -hmm. um, let me share a little story from mm -hmm. from from um, Safaricom Ethiopia mm -hmm. where there was a, a lady who was selling airtime outside, right outside the Safaricom Ethiopia building. Mm. Um, and a lot of people would come to her for airtime. And suddenly, um, it, it, it occurred to one of our people in the foundation at the time that, look, why don't we give this woman a much better setup for her mm. to sell airtime? Because yeah. when it's raining, mm -hmm. uh, when it's too hot, then, you know, sometimes she's not there. Mm -hmm. um, she, it's just not conducive. And so what they did is they built a little structure for her mm -hmm. with you know, a huge Safaricom umbrella mm -hmm. and her business boomed. Literally, okay. she had to bring in her husband and she's obviously from a you know, low income category in society. Mm -hmm. um, business boomed. Her husband ha has had to come in and you know, they're taking turns. Business is booming from morning to evening right outside the Safaricom building. So not only a Safaricom staff patronizing mm -hmm. and now she's beginning to offer a few other additional services. Yeah. She offers coffee. Mm -hmm. You know Ethiopia is big for coffee, so yep. she mm -hmm. offers coffee as well. So that is a perfect example of what we as Safaricom mm -hmm. um, are able to do and see the fruits of investing in economic empowerment. Mm -hmm. When you empower a woman, mm -hmm. um, it has been said that it'll go, it'll, it's likely to go yeah. much further than Absolutely. when you empower a man. Yeah. Um, in that case, you know, her husband has, has had to join her. And, you yes. know, apparently, sometimes their children are there. Yeah. So it's an opportunity for us to give chances to those who are disadvantaged mm -hmm. in society mm -hmm. uh, we make it a big deal even with our suppliers to make sure that we are seeing we want to see diversity we want mm -hmm. to see inclusion we want to see the opportunities mm -hmm. that would otherwise be given to people who went decent school decent mm -hmm. qualifications to mm -hmm. those who are less empowered in society so for us economic empowerment is big it's and it's not yeah. economic empowerment in a big way mm -hmm. it is in a small way yeah. but the impact of that is significant Magnitude. because it gives again dignity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it allows that individual mm -hmm. to access mm -hmm. a means of livelihood mm -hmm. to feed themselves to yeah. pay their rent to educate their children mm -hmm. it gives them a chance at life um, mm -hmm. so for, for us as safaricom mm -hmm. that's really big yeah so understanding all these areas right we talked about the environment education health and economic empowerment now um, so would you say Safaricom has sort of lived or it's living, living um, your purpose now, even as we look toward, you know, 2030, <coughs> 2050, 2070, and um, so on and so forth? Safaricom has been living okay. purpose. Even okay. before we gave it the words, we defined it was in our vision mm -hmm. as purpose. Mm -hmm. Safaricom, right from its inception, with Michael Joseph as the CEO, mm -hmm. has been living purpose. We just didn't call it purpose then. Okay. That's been our DNA. Mm. We have been partnering with the community. And that's why I started by saying mm -hmm. every Kenyan is our customer. Okay. Not because they consume our services, mm -hmm. but because we take social impact investment mm -hmm. to their communities. Mm -hmm. For us, the spirit of Tuinwane, especially at this time when our country is going through a really difficult economic There's time. a lot of things happening, yeah. It's about lifting each other up. Mm -hmm. We have the privilege of Safaricom mm -hmm. to run a business mm -hmm. that is patronized by a lot of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. That privilege allows us to identify those opportunities in society mm -hmm. where we can pull up people. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's 
living that spirit of Tuinuane. So right. it has been lived by Safaricom mm -hmm. for 23 years of its life, okay. and we continue to do it. Mm -hmm. What we are doing, however, mm -hmm. is iterating mm -hmm. and making it better. Absolutely. We're looking at more opportunities. Mm -hmm. We're looking at partnering even better with the local communities. We're looking at interrogating or auditing mm -hmm. what have we been doing, mm -hmm. how can we do it far better, mm -hmm. how can we do it in a more innovative manner, mm -hmm. how, um, how can we enhance, mm -hmm. you know, as, as we continue to, profits will come mm -hmm. when you focus on purpose, when you focus on your people. people as the yeah. profits continue to come in, mm -hmm. plowing those profits into our foundations to make sure we're reaching out mm -hmm. to, to, to our communities through health, education, mm -hmm. environmental conservation and yeah. uh, economic empowerment mm -hmm. is just part of that story. Mm -hmm. Safaricom and what it does through the spirit, through its spirit of Tuinwane, mm -hmm. will outlive you and I. Okay. And you know, our children and our children's children, hopefully, mm -hmm. um, will continue to do that. Yeah, we want yeah. to see that. We want to see that. Okay. Um, so before we again um, end the conversation, we cannot end this without talking about the newly launched um, strategy, right? Do you want to take us through what that is about? What is it that we expect to see, um, you know, as your customers? Because like you said, every Kenyan is <laughs> Safari Cops customers. Yeah. But really, what is it about? So the, the, um, the vision of, 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 of the Safari Com Foundation, mm -hmm. and that was launched a couple of weeks ago, yeah. is to transform lives through um, impactful social investment. Mm -hmm. So for us, it was about reviewing our strategy mm -hmm. to iterate, to fail forward. Okay. I think we're doing really good, mm. but we realized we can do better. Okay. So for us, it's finding, have the needs changed? Have we identified where new pain points have come in? Mm. Just because we've been doing health, mm -hmm. education, um, economic, economic empowerment, empowerment. And is it that? Or, or are there new um, nuances mm. in, in health that we haven't addressed before? Mm -hmm. um, and, and for us, in, in, at the Safaricom Foundation, after, after the launch of the strategy, mm -hmm we've realized that, you know, Tivet is really, really big. I think mm. there's a lot more that we could do okay. around the Tivet space. Mm -hmm. There's a huge chunk of our population mm -hmm. um, who need access to that sort of Tivet education. Mm -hmm. um, one of the amazing things about doing Tivet is the chance at economic empowerment that it gives those who end up graduating. Mm -hmm. uh, the opportunity to be sponsored for a course of your choice. Um, you might think it's simplistic, you know, you're going to learn how to cook food or, or, or be in a restaurant. But mm -hmm. um, in some of the institutions that we've partnered with, um, um, very interestingly, I attended the graduation of um, a Tibet institution that does training in the hospitality industry. Mm -hmm. And it so happened after that graduation, I, I went for lunch um, at, at some five-star hotel. Mm -hmm. And the gentleman I was meeting, um, very interestingly, who asked me where I was and I explained to him, mm -hmm. uh, did tell me that the lady who was serving us um, actually went to that Tibet institution and had gradu graduated three years before. Um, yeah. And they are so well trained that yeah. they, they do get poached by so many five and seven star institutions. So mm -hmm. I guess what I'm trying to say is this. Mm -hmm. Our new strategy was about us trying to ask ourselves, how do we continue failing forward? Mm -hmm. um, when you succeed, it can get comfortable. You oh, might yes. feel, okay, yeah. I think we're doing it. Let's keep doing it. But yeah. what we're trying to do is to reinvent the wheel. Okay. After all, we're a technology company. We keep on reinventing and rejigging. So uh, that for us is what um, we want to do in terms of our strategy, not listen to ourselves, mm -hmm. but listen to the communities, mm -hmm. partner with the government, mm -hmm. make sure that we are attentive to where the impact needs to be had. So mm -hmm. impactful investment mm -hmm. is what a new strategy is about. Yeah, I yeah. talked about big on partnerships and maybe some, some, someone who's watching us and thinking, okay then, um, how can people, I mean aside from buying airtime and bundles, what were bundles, yeah, uh, and all those things, <laughs> how best then can, can I mean, and, or how can, you know, people, ordinary Kenyans also partner with Safaricom? Because like you said, um, you know, it's in the SDG and of course it's important because at the end of the day you go far, you know, yes. when it comes to partnerships, right? Um, so yeah, so people who are watching us and thinking, okay, how can we, can I be part of this partnership? So um, there are various ways people mm -hmm. can, uh, can partner with us. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the simple way, simpler ways would be through, for example, our Ndoto Zetu program. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had three successful iterations okay. of Ndoto Zetu. We're on the fourth. Mm -hmm. um, and this has allowed us to impact, again, those, those areas of health, mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. um, and Ndoto Zetu is basically about giving an opportunity to the community mm -hmm. um, to write to us right. and tell us what are those 
what are you dreaming about? What do you want to mm -hmm. see come yeah. to reality? Mm -hmm. And you might be very surprised that, you know, mm -hmm. if I asked you what your dream, dream was, it might be more grand mm -hmm. than a mother who just wants the opportunity for her child to get school uniform. Mm -hmm. It could be as simple as that. I yeah. mean, those literally, for me, are the tear-jerking moments. Mm. When you see the dreams that are expressed in an application that come to us, okay. and we have a committee that goes through all those, um, and then we go fulfilling mm -hmm. those dreams in different parts of mm -hmm. the country. All right. It's absolutely amazing what those little slips of paper mm -hmm. that come in the form of applications can do. So people can partner with us and tell us, in your community, mm -hmm. this is the dream that you have. It could be in a school, it could be, it could be um, a dispensary. You know, what is it that you want to see happen? Mm -hmm. um, now, because we have finite resources, again, we're not promising to do everything, everything but yeah. certainly the most deserving, and those are called on the basis of what are the most deserving, what have we done in that area, mm -hmm. you know, is it a request in a school that we were in before. Mm -hmm. So Ndoto Zeti is one way. Okay. Um, certainly if there are people in, in, in society who, who feel that um, their children absolutely are disadvantaged mm -hmm. in education, yeah. by all means, mm -hmm. um, you know, applications are ongoing for, mm -hmm. for the Mpesa Foundation Academy. Mm -hmm. So we'd encourage them to apply for, for, for the Foundation Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, people can, part, can partner with us uh, through something we're, we are also doing and we're, we're going to launch on Saturday. Mm -hmm what we're calling Chapadimba uh, that we've mm -hmm. done in the past. This yeah. is um, another iteration of Chapadimba. This time mm -hmm. we're making it bigger, we're making it better. And some of the opportunities we're going to give, and I shouldn't be jumping the gun here, mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to be providing some rewards or um, gifts in the form of social partnerships. Okay. Um, and I, can't, I suppose I can't go into any more detail, but as part of mm -hmm. beyond just, you know, the prize, the cup, the money. Mm -hmm. So we are relaunching Chapadimba this weekend. Um, and, and, you know, this is going to be bigger. It's going to be better. It's mm -hmm. going to be more excellent. So mm -hmm. um, we look forward to, you know, people looking to partner with us. Look, are you living in a community, uh, you know, football teams? There's a whole process that, of course, that needs to be gone through before mm -hmm. um, teams can qualify. So uh, those are some of the ways that um, individuals can partner with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So as we bring this to a close, and, and this is then the whole element about partnerships. Um, so to what level would you say partnerships has helped Safaricom to achieve, um, you know, your set targets or your goals? You know what? Without partnerships, yeah. I dare say that we wouldn't have the brand visibility that we have. Okay. We wouldn't have, ha have impacted mm -hmm. all those people that we have impacted. Mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't have people... Um, whose lives have been changed by Safaricom. Mm -hmm. uh, s there would be some people, I suppose, whose lives would have been changed, mm -hmm. but not at the scale that we've done it. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday we were at, um, in Makueni County, mm -hmm. um, again, just another partnership, mm -hmm. um, and we've partnered with Makueni County and many counties, not just on the social investment side, mm -hmm. but also on the commercial side. Right. And uh, we're launching the My County app mm -hmm. um, uh, with, with, uh, with, with Governor Mutula, Mutula Kilonzo Jr. Mm -hmm. And, and that's going to be big in the way that people in his county can engage with him. Mm -hmm. So he has, in that app, he has an opportunity for, there's something called Semana Mutula, where mm -hmm. from wherever you are in the county, you can engage yes. with him and tell him, hey, we're having an issue. Mm -hmm. We're having a problem with this, with this dam or with this porthole. Um, mm -hmm. And take a picture, upload mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And it's not just for smartphones. Mm -hmm. You know, people can access it using the USSD menu. Yeah. Um, it's an opportunity for the county government to collect revenue um, mm -hmm. in a much better way, mm -hmm. but also through allowing people not having to travel all the way from, say, Mtito and Day to Wote mm -hmm. to go and pay for their land rates. They can yeah. do it on a platform. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That's a partnership that um, we are providing mm -hmm. a county government mm -hmm. to engage with its, its citizens mm -hmm. more directly, mm -hmm. far better. It's almost like having face-to-face -face conversations, mm -hmm. except it's on Mtandao. Yeah. So for us, as a technology company, mm -hmm. Partnerships are critical. We cannot do anything without partnerships. Okay. We believe in partnerships. It's, it's the way to go. Absolutely. One second to speak to your, your customers. Your camera is there. <laughs> it's very safari common partnerships and everything else. Okay. We thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, not just our customers who have our SIM cards and mm -hmm. use our services, but all Kenyans. Okay. Safaricom is a company for Kenyans. We believe in working with all Kenyans. We will continue to do the best that we can, not just to offer excellent mm -hmm. communication services as a technology company, mm -hmm. but to partner to meet your needs. Mm -hmm. um, we will use, continue to use our foundations mm -hmm. to answer those requests um, that come through Ndoto Zetu. Mm -hmm. But we thank you for the opportunity that, and the privilege that you've given us as Safaricom mm -hmm. to partner with you. Mm -hmm. We undertake and we commit 
to continue being a partner into the future, not just for you, but for the generations that come after you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I hear that. Okay, Mr. Stephen Kiptinus, Chief Corporate Affairs Officer at uh, Safaricom PLC, thank you so much for coming by today and, of course, helping us get more insights, really, as far as Safaricom is concerned and just beyond the business aspect of the thing, the purpose people, um, you know, and lastly, profit. you know, profit uh, aspect of the thing. So thank you. Thank, thank you, so you very much for coming by this morning. And thank you for staying with us until the end of the conversation or until the end of the show. Now I know you have a better understanding, uh, you know, as far as Safaricom, uh, Safaricom is concerned and, of course, the sustainability aspect of the business as well. So the next time you're buying bundles or airtime, uh, you know what exactly you're buying into, okay? So have yourselves a lovely day ahead. Uh, and I'll see you next week. Um, for now, have yourselves a lovely weekend. Stay safe. God bless. And uh, see you soon. Goodbye for now. Thank you.